it's Dr. Joe, and welcome to episode six of Bring On 60, my weekly show where I follow my journey as I try to get into the best shape of my life by my 60th birthday this year. So i um, really been appreciating everyone who's been watching and sending in their comments and their questions and their feedback. I, it, it really... It really makes it all worthwhile, you know, knowing that people are, you know, watching and, and commenting, and uh, I don't know, really inspires me to keep it keep it going, and I really appreciate it. So keep keep the comments and the questions and the suggestions, keep them coming, good or bad. <laughs> uh, so today, got a couple things going on. So I'm headed into the gym, like I usually do on Saturday morning, to get an arm workout in. So today's episode, like we always, like we've been doing, I'm going to get a uh, weigh-in and a physique update after I train today. Before we do that, one of the things that we were doing on the show this week was going to be um, back workout. So I filmed the back workout from Tuesday. I'm going to share with that, uh, I'm going to share with you guys that back workout in a second. Uh, I have clips from Tuesday that we that I filmed. So before we get into the back workout, just a couple of things about back training. So I mean, for the adult crowd, you know, bring on sixty crowd. I feel like uh, back training is just so important. If if I was to put together a list of things that need to be worked to prevent. You know injuries especially like obviously people deal with so much low back pain especially as we get older I mean probably number one on my list would be core you know working your core but two would definitely be strength training for your back you know the, it's so important to keep those spinal erector muscles strong to support the spine and and you know those muscles they wear away as we get older and we become less active we sit more, we do less, and those muscles that are there to support the spine atrophy, and it leads to more back problems. I mean, I have people all the time, every day, asking me, you know, how do I keep, you know, my back from going out? You know, how do I keep my back from bothering me? And I'm, I'm, I tell everyone the same thing: you got to keep the muscles around the spine strong. So, so that's the one important reason why you want to make sure you incorporate strength training for your back into you, you know, your weekly workouts. But the other thing is, remember, as we get older, we we have issues with bone density too. You know, we lose bone density. Bones respond to the stress that's placed on them. And so, if you're inactive, people start to lose bone density. There's no stress on the bones, and the bones become weaker, and you go to the doctors and you get diagnosed with osteopenia, and then osteoporosis, and, and the, the the thing is, is like there's so much research out there that shows how strength training, you know, putting some stress on the bones, not just of the spine, I mean all our bones, strengthens them. And so that's what makes strength training so important is you can help the muscles to support the spine and then also you can help strengthen the bones themselves by, by doing some strength training. Now you'll see in a second, I mean, I on my back workouts, obviously I enjoy lifting weights and so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm using barbells and dumbbells, but, you know, strength training can be anything. I mean, you can use resistance bands, you know, you can do strength training with, you know, if you just have a pair of dumbbells at the house. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. The important thing is to just start making sure that you're working those muscles of, of your back. So anyways, let me share with you the back workout from this past Tuesday. So um, here's, here's some of the clips. Okay, so we're doing some back today. I thought I'd film a back workout. Um, always start off my back workouts with deadlifts. I love doing back because there's so many variations of back exercises you can do. So it's always a fun workout to me. Today we're focusing on a lot of, I'm gonna focus on a lot of rowing type of motions. Other days sometimes I focus more on pull down type of motions. But like I said, the back is so enjoyable because there's so many different things. But I always kind of, I always like to start off with deadlifts. So. Uh, I'm gonna switch up. I did like I've already done like three warm-up sets, so I'm gonna start into some of the working sets here. Now, it's funny. I'm not using a ton of weight. 
As you guys, if you watched last week, I mean, I weighed in at 144.8 pounds, so I'm not a big guy, and I'm not, um, at my age, I'm not trying to move big weights, but in case, you know, anyone thinks I'm, I'm trying to put fake plates, like fake 45s on, uh, you know, just a little demonstration, <laughs> it's real, all right? I'm not trying to impress anybody, actually, so if you don't believe that the weights are real, you know, who cares, <laughs> right? That's the attitude you have as you, as you come up on 60. You just think to yourself, who cares, right? Who cares what other people think? But anyways, I'm going to start my first... I guess you could say my first working set with two and a quarter. And uh, like I said, I already got three. I got three warm-up sets in. I'm still at the weight where I'm not actually... I don't put... Generally, I don't put a belt on until I get a little bit a little bit heavier. So with two and a quarter, I, I won't put a belt on. So a couple things about deadlifting as far as, you know, what I do. I go with just a, a close stance. I'm, I'm not doing sumos, nothing wrong with sumos. I've worked sumos before. But, you know, as far as what I feel like really nails my, my erector muscles and my, my glutes and my hamstrings, I like being in a close stance. I actually can deadlift more in a sumo stance, but I'm really not interested in how much weight I can deadlift. I'm just looking to get in the shape, build muscle, so I'm going to stick with a close uh, close stance because I feel like that works the muscles better. And then the other thing you're going to notice is I always do a hook grip, a double overhand. I like it better than a mixed grip. I feel like a mixed grip, one, you're more susceptible to a bicep injury on the hand that's, un that's turned underhand like this. You can pull your bicep. I've seen people tear their biceps. The other thing is when you have a mixed grip, it throws off your, your traps, your shoulders, your alignment. So I feel like if you learn a hook grip, it's a better postural position. Um, and if you're not familiar with a hook grip, and I've done a complete video on how to do a hook grip, but basically what I'm doing when I grab the bar is I'm actually getting my thumbs under my, my, my fingers. So I, I have my thumbs here and I get under. It's a weird grip at first, and it kind of people say, like, oh, I can't do it, it hurts. You get used to it, and actually, before you know it, it feels awesome, and it's just such a great grip on the bar. You just, you just, it's a solid grip. So, anyways, if you, I do have a video on, on how to do a hook grip. Great technique to learn how to do. Um, I would suggest learning it. And deal with the pain for a while. It's not that bad, you know. It maybe hurts for a little bit, but I just put a little chalk on, and it's fine. So, anyways... Let's start with uh, one of our first working sets. So of course when you're deadlifting, when you're, I'll go over some technique stuff. Uh, actually, let me do this set. We'll, we'll, we'll put some different weights on and then we'll talk a little more about technique. So anyways, first set here. So it was 10. Notice on the last rep, I like to lower it down slowly. Why drop the weight, you know? You lose that last, that last half a rep by lowering down slowly. It gives you a little extra work. So anyways, let's move on to another set. Okay, second set to an extra, another 10 on each side. So I guess that's uh, 245. Usually when I get to a set, a weight where um, under 10 reps, which I'll probably be for this set, that's usually when I start throwing on a belt. I don't put it on super tight, and it, 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 what I like about the belt, and I do this even when I don't have a belt on, is you know you, you, when you when you're about to lift the weight on the floor, you want to make sure you have that inhale. You have you have air in in the midsection, and what I think of doing is before you make the lift is really try to push the sides of the belt out with your with your you know push out like you try to drive your obliques into the belt, and almost like you try to pop the belt off. And, and that builds that that really braces the the core so that you can lift weights off the floor safely. 
it, you gotta have ear in. It's almost like if you take a, uh, a can of soda, or, uh, when, the, when the compression is in there, you know, it's, you can actually stand on a can of soda. If you pop the top off the soda and, and empty the can out and now there's, there's nothing in the can and you step on it, the, the can collapses. You, you want the pressure in there from the, the, the ear. And so it's the same thing with your midsection. You brace by taking a deep breath in and try to really push the, the belt away from you with your, your midsection. I don't put the belt on particularly tight. I actually put it on so that I can just by hand put the, put the belt on. I don't try to crank it on or anything like that. Okay. So I take a breath in and push out. I don't hold it because when I come down here, I like to get set first. I know some people like to drop down and just get right into it, but I kind of take that breath in. I got the pressure on the belt anyways, but I'm breathing. I get my grip all set. And before I go, I'm gonna take a deep breath in and push out on the belt. Okay. All right. Always get that little feeling of being a little lightheaded. All right, so that felt good. That was a set of eight. Move on to another set. Okay, so I threw another five on each side, so it's 255. You know, it's funny, I know a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people don't like to deadlift. They feel like it's not. Um, a good movement, especially as we get older. I, I kind of disagree. I feel like if you're able to do it, if you have the mobility to do it, if you have the, um, you know, just the ability, no, you know, injury as far as like, you know, no major back injuries. I feel like it's a great exercise to try to keep doing as we get older because it's a, it's a, it's a movement that we're always doing. I mean, when are you lifting something at the house? You know, you're, you're, you're picking something up or you're moving something, you're working in the yard. We're always bending to pick something up. So let's learn to do it correctly. Let's learn to, 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 to build up those, the strength uh, of those erective muscles, those spinal erective muscles. I mean, these are muscles that tend to get weak as we get older. And I feel like deadlifting is, is a, I don't know, I just feel like it's an exercise we all should be doing if you're capable of doing it. Like I said, if you have, you know, no major back injuries, no major injuries that are preventing you from doing it, I would do it. And if you're not doing it, start off light, work with dumbbells, work with barbells, but just, you know, try to incorporate it into your routine. So, okay. Get going again i'm mean, still at 255 it's funny i had thoughts of doing working today up to 275 but i'm just not feeling the love today uh i think it's because my hips been feeling better and so i've been running more and the last two days were the first two days where i ran back to back days again and my hip feels fine but i can just feel it the lower body just feels like i've used it a little more than i had in a while and uh i think as a result i'm just not I'm not feeling the love on these deadlifts, but that's okay. You know, I had thoughts of doing 275. I'll more than likely be able to do it next week, I'm sure. And uh, so that's okay. I'm, I'm sticking with the 255, no problems. And uh, just using this as my working set. So we're gonna go again with it.
this is the third set now with 255. Just another quick deadlifting tip. You know, when before I'm about to go up, pull off the ground with the with the bar, pull the bar off the ground. A couple things I do. One is I, I pull the slack off the bar out of the bar. Like in other words, I get rid of that little bit of slack by, by putting a little, you know, keep pulling up a little bit. And the other thing I think of doing is pulling my shoulders kind of like back, like back and in, in together, like pulling them like in this position before I come off the ground too. So I lock out. So I really lock the, the scapulas into a strong position. I kind of think of pulling back and in, in together, pulling them together and back, like in that position like that. Uh, at the same time that I'm taking that breath in and really extending on the belt. I mean, the whole idea is I want this entire frame to be as strong as I can make it so that I don't get injured and so that I can lift the weight off of the floor. So anyways, let's do one more set with 255. Okay, so one final set. I dropped back down to two and a quarter. I'm not gonna bother with the belt. We'll get one final set in here. It's funny, if you know, when I do deadlifts and stuff, I like to keep my sweats on. I like to stay warm and um, keep the muscles warm. I just feel like it's a good way to prevent injuries. I, I, I always wear uh, sweats when I, uh, most of the time when I deadlift, unless it's really, really hot out. Uh, I just like to, I like to keep the, I like to keep all the muscles nice and warm. It's a good way to prevent injury, so. Okay, so that deadlift um, section is in the books, all done. That's what I was just talking about training with keeping the sweats on to stay warm, but it's so hot in there. I just turned on the heat in there. I was dying on that last set. Anyways, um, we're gonna do some bent over rows. I'm doing them today with an underhand grip, standing a little more upright, kind of hits the upper back a little bit more. I started doing these years ago after seeing uh, Dorian Yates, you know, the former Mr. Olympia. A lot of times when you watch him train, he used to do the upright rows a little more upright with the underhand grip. And uh, I really feel like it really nails the uh, mid to upper back when you do it with, it, with that technique. So uh, a quick story, it's funny, I actually met Dorian Yates years ago. I was competing at the, I think it was the Junior USA competition in, in Chicago back in the beginning of the 90s, right? And he was the guest poser. And I've never seen a back on someone so huge in my life. This guy was, his back looked like a tortoise shell. And a quick story too, I, so the, the competition was over and I got a pizza and I walk into the elevator with my pizza and who's standing in the elevator when the door closes but Dorian Yates. And I'm like looking at him, I was just like twice my size. He was just ginormous and he's like, time for some pizza, huh? And I was like, yeah, I didn't know what to say to the guy. But anyways, it was funny, and the guy was absolutely unbelievable. Nice guy, nice guy. So anyways, um, let's do some bent over rows. I'm gonna start with, I got 135. So 
12. Notice I try to pull right to my, my the crease of my hips and try to keep as good as form as I can. Sometimes in those last couple reps, a little bit of body English is absolutely fine. Okay, set two. I threw another five on each side, so this is 145. So we did 12 on the first set. This will probably be 10. Okay, so I got uh, another, uh, I took the five, so I got a 10 on each side, so this is 155. I'm knocking the reps down a little bit. I'm gonna try to go for a set of eight. You know, bent over rows can get sloppy really fast. So try to do your best to keep your form. So anyways, I was a set of eight. And I'm back down to 145 again. So I'm gonna go back to a set of 10. You know, the rep scheme, I'm not married to any rep scheme. You know, every workout is a different rep scheme as far as I'm concerned. You know, I vary, I vary, vary a lot of times the amount of sets. Uh, you know, if I'm doing, four sets on here today or five sets today. I might only do three next workout. I might do three sets of eight. Today, I'm gonna to go 12, 10, eight, 10, 12. So I'm gonna do five sets of them. I just mix it up, just part of it, just to keep it interesting, keep it fun, and just to keep the body off guard, basically. So anyways, here's another set. This is gonna be 10. So in between, in between sets, a lot of times I just sip on my my drink. It's just fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I mean, it's always a different mixture every day. But anyway, it's just a I just sip along the way. So anyways, this is the last set back down to one thirty-five. <clears throat> Gonna go for twelve. Okay, moving on to some single arm dumbbell rows. I love this exercise. Just feel like it hits the back in a different way. You know, notice all everything I'm doing today is pretty basic stuff. I'm not even, uh, I'm probably gonna do the whole workout today when I'm actually having to step into the main gym over here. I'm not using any cables. I mean, this is all stuff that you could do at home with just a barbell and a couple dumbbells, right? Um, so this, is all, this whole workout is something that you can just do at your house. So it's a pretty simple, basic workout with just barbells and dumbbells. So anyways, one thing about dumb, uh, single arm dumbbell rows, I actually generally will use a lighter weight on these than some other people might because I don't, I'm not trying to pull this way. I actually think of pulling back this way, which is actually harder. So you're not gonna be able to use as much weight. I try to drag the dumbbell along my leg, but I feel like it, you get a better, a better contraction, a better um, squeeze, and more work on the lat. So I like doing it that way. Just drop the amount of weight you've been using and, and pull up along the leg and you'll see, you'll feel the difference. So anyways, um, let's get going on these.
Okay, let's go again. You want to do three sets of 12 on this today. One last set on each arm. This workout is starting to definitely catch up with me. <laughs> Feeling some fatigue, but I got a good pump, pump going in the back, and that's that's really all that matters. A good pump going. So, all right. So I'm gonna wrap up this back workout with some body weight training. This is a great exercise if you've never done it before. I've been doing this since I was a gymnast years and years ago. It's called a front lever to a half a pull up. You can go back and forth between a front lever and half a pull up. Give it a try. I mean, if you've never used it before, this is one of those exercises you can use resistance bands. I'm doing it at the end of the workout right now. My arms and my back are just toast and uh, I won't get any real good reps if I do it um, without any assistance. So when I'm doing it at the end, it's okay. You know, I'll use a light band and, and get some reps with this. If you're new to it, use a thicker band. But check out this exercise. It really hits your lats. And you got to remember, when you pull with a straight arm like this, you, you engage your lats. And of course, on pull-ups, you're engaging your lats. So this is like this constant contraction on your back as you go from a front lever position to a half a pull-up. So let me, let me demonstrate. But anyways... Great exercise. So, like I said, I just have a band hanging off my pull-up bar. Put one foot in there. Step down. Okay. So, from this position, here we go. constant tension on your lats. It's an awesome exercise. So anyways, that was 10, 10 reps. We're going to do three sets. If you're near the end of your back workout and your back feels like it's, it's already beat, finish with this exercise. And I'll tell you, you got nothing, you'll have nothing left. <laughs>
those half a pull-ups, I was going lower and lower on each rep. <laughs> okay, last set of this, this exercise. And I am done with back. Whew. Hopefully I can get 10 again. Do what I can. This might get a little ugly. back training today hope you enjoyed it gonna finish up with some core slash ab work for today's workout and uh, and then we'll move on tomorrow tomorrow is a uh, shoulders workout all right okay so anyone if you get any comments questions about that back training workout let me know as I mentioned in the video I, I enjoy working back because there's so much variety you can do but you notice I mentioned how one staple of every back workout is always those deadlifts. And, and the reason deadlifts, I find, are so important, if, if you can do them, if you have a, you know, no injuries that are preventing you from deadlifting, the reason I find deadlifting is so important is because it's, at and, and, and any age, it's, it's because, think of a deadlift. I mean, you're picking, are you picking things off the floor all day long? I mean, you know, we, we all are, and, and so, picking things off the floor, you're moving a sofa, you're doing, you're, we're constantly lifting things and I feel like deadlifting is just so important to learn how to pick things up properly and to build strength in those areas. So anyways, let me know if you have any comments on that. Uh, second thing I just want to discuss today as we head into the gym is what I call my um, put your oxygen mask on first theory. So my oxygen, put your oxygen mask on first theory is you ever fly in an airplane and you get that pre-flight instruction from the steward, steward or stewardess, and they explain how, in case of an emergency, the oxygen mask is going to drop down, and um, they always tell you, put your oxygen mask on first, so that then you can help others, you can help your kids or whoever you're with. And I, I always find that interesting, and, it, and of course, it's because of the fact that if you don't have your oxygen on you're going to be in no shape to help anybody else obviously and this and i always apply that to how people they don't leave the time to take care of themselves during the, the, the day or during the week in other words you want to always put your oxygen mask on first it's so important and we're always worried about everyone else and i get it you know where you, know, you worry about your job you worry about your kids you worry about your family and sometimes we forget about ourselves. We forget to put that oxygen on first. And and it comes. And what I'm getting to is about how the day goes by and we don't make the time for our own workout. You know, to do our training, to do our yoga, to do our meditation. We we, we let it get lost in the mix, and we don't do anything for ourselves. And the day whole day goes by, and we're running around like crazy. We're doing all this stuff for our job and for our family and we don't put our oxygen mask on we don't take care of ourselves so and I'll, so let me give you a couple tips to help that and, and maybe help you make sure that you always leave time to, to take care of yourself at some point during the day most people when you they wake up in the morning they just have kind of like a vague recollection of what their day what they're doing that day you know they they know they have stuff to do and they may wake up and oh yeah I know later today at some point I gotta take my kid to soccer practice and at some point I have a meeting and I have I have a meeting and you know they've been not, not really sure because they really haven't really planned out their schedule they just know they have stuff to do and also and then the back of their mind and a vague idea they'll be like yeah and I, I want to get to the gym today you know but nothing's it's just everything's vague you know and as they get up people get up and they get moving and then you know, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, then they realize, oh yeah, at three o'clock, I have to take my kid to soccer practice. And 
and at uh, you know 4:30 I have a meeting with so and so and so and it almost it comes up on them as the day goes on and so before they before you know it the whole day has gone by and that vague idea of trying to exercise for yourself you know putting your oxygen mask on that whole vague idea kind of goes by you know you never you don't really get it done and um, so what I would suggest doing is is you know the night before I mean ideally the you should do this for the week you know like you know on, on a Sunday is know exactly what your whole week schedule is but even at the very least the night before and I like to keep notebooks I'm old school I don't like putting things on my phone I don't like putting things on the computer I like pen and paper you know I like to write things out and I have notebooks for everything and one thing you should keep a notebook on is for your, your schedule especially like your workout schedule but even if it's the night before you should have everything written down for the next day exactly what you have to do so that that way you can put in what you're doing for yourself that day you know for your workout whether it's yoga whether it's weightlifting whether it's going for a run you write it down and you don't just write it down vaguely like you know you write it down in detail so you know you know that you're going to work you know that at three o'clock you're taking the kid to, your kids to soccer practice but you also write down that at, at one o'clock what exactly you're doing and I, and I mean exactly like you know at one o'clock I am going to such and such gym at such and such time and I'm gonna do this this and that and for 60 minutes and you write it down in detail now that's in your schedule and studies show that if you have that written down in detail in your schedule the chances of missing it go way down your, your chances of completing the task go way up when it's written down in detail in, 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 in on your schedule like that and so by doing that you know if you haven't been down then if someone calls you and says that you know hey a friend calls you hey you want to grab lunch at 12 30 no I'm sorry I can't I got something to do at one o'clock you know it's it's in your schedule it's it's firm it's solid and the chances of missing it go way down and that's what um, we need to do to make sure that we get in that that oxygen for ourselves during during each day and and it doesn't you know and whatever your plan is it doesn't have to be whatever you enjoy I mean it doesn't have to go you don't have to lift weights every day but I mean maybe one day you want to do yoga one day you want to go for a run one day you want to go for a bike ride one day you want to lift weights but it's that that chance to, to be healthy to be fit uh, and, and it's time for yourself and so the thing that, the way to do it is to just put it down don't leave the day up to chance we wake it up and you know you don't know what the heck's going on that day you know you just you just you know you just go through the day staggering through the day oh yeah I, I forgot in a half hour I gotta go do this oh yeah I forgot I gotta and most people just kind of like they they just forget about most you know it's like it comes up on them you know thank God they set reminders on their phone like 15 minutes before an appointment they didn't even know they had the appointment but the, 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 the timer goes off on their phone and it's you know in 15 minutes oh I got a meeting you know I got like most people don't even know what's going on for the day I mean look at it the night before set it up on Sunday but but know your schedule and that's how you can fit extra stuff into your schedule by knowing your schedule so anyways I hope that little tip helps but make sure you get your oxygen in for the day it's so important you you know if you don't take care of yourself you can't take care of others you know you can't you can't take care of your business you can't take care of your family you can't take care of your kids if you're not taking care of yourself first so anyways almost at the gym gonna get that workout in and then we'll be doing our uh, weigh-in and physique update okay so just finished a great arm workout time to do the weekly weigh-in I only weigh myself once a week I don't get caught up with the scale you know a lot of people jump on the scale every morning every day I mean once a week is plenty if you're, um, even if you're just trying to lose weight or whatever, you're trying to put on weight, you don't need to be weighing yourself every day. I feel like it's it's just psychologically, it's not it's not good. You're better off just try to weigh yourself once a week at the same time, try to wear the same clothing, the same time, you know, like a, the same amount of time after you eat. Like I eat breakfast a little while ago, so I'm kind of being consistent at the time that I'm weighing myself every week. So anyways. So I got the same exact weight from last week, 144.8. So same exact weight. But I've been feeling stronger. I feel like I've been, you know, improving some body parts. So anyways, um, things seem to be going well. So I'm gonna, let's do a quick physique update here.
definitely been every week I've been, you know, I and what everyone should do, I track all my workouts, you know, I write everything down and um, you know, every week I check back what I did last week and definitely using more weight every week and getting stronger, so I'm feeling good, you know. I mean that's the main thing. Let's go through some poses here. All right, I feel, like I feel like things are coming along. I mean, let me know what you think. I appreciate the feedback, but I feel like even though, you know, I haven't really put on any weight, I mean, but I feel like I've, I've been making some good changes. I know I've got a long way to go. There's some body parts I wanna try to build up the best I can. I mean, you know, I get it. I'm gonna be 60. <laughs> You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to have too lofty of goals or anything, but you know, I am. I'm, I'm, I when I set my mind to, to you know, I want to get into the best shape of my life, and I'd like to bring up some different body parts to try to get them, you know, back to where I, I, I you know, I pictured them to be. So, anyways, I hope everyone had a great week. I hope everyone has a great week in this upcoming week. Make sure you get your training in, eat healthy, and don't forget Oakland Med Health is here to keep you fit forever.